both Arch Linux and Gen2 have some of the best user-made documentation out there, and it makes sense. These are distros where you basically have to do everything yourself. You install the system from a TTY. You start from a TTY. You go from there, adding everything you need. You need good documentation to make something like this accessible. Gen2 more so than Arch because there's also compile flags to worry about and things like that. But they're both much further on the line than something like Ubuntu, Fedora, or even something like Manjaro. Now, due to their starting point, these are not distros I would recommend to a new user. I did use Arch as my first distro, but I knew what I was getting into. I watched a bunch of videos, I read a bunch of the wiki, I read a bunch of blog posts. I knew what Arch was when I was going to use Arch. And if I was going to recommend Arch, it would be to someone that I knew personally, where I personally knew that they knew what they were getting into. But regular people, not so much. In the same vein, I wouldn't recommend probably, I don't know, 99% of the distros listed on something like DistroWatch or any other site that keeps track of existing distros. This is not to throw shade at any of these distro developers. I know some of them, and the ones I know are all great people. And I'm sure most of the rest of them are great people as well, trying to make great software. There's obviously going to be exceptions, but let's just say that most of them are trying to do something good. However, I really wish people would stop suggesting niche distros to a new user. Even if the distro is technically really good, you probably still shouldn't recommend it. I've said many times that under the hood, most distros are pretty much the same. Given enough time and enough effort and enough knowledge, you can do whatever you want to a distro. If you have an install of Manjaro, for example, you can strip that down and turn it back into Vanilla Arch. It's a lot of effort, but it can be done. You can turn Ubuntu back into Debian. It's a lot of effort and you shouldn't do it, but it can be done. But that's not the sort of stuff a regular new user is doing. That's for the people who are very technically minded, who have a very deep understanding of Linux. Even then, most Linux veterans don't want to take on that task. For a new user, one of the most important things is easily accessible information when something goes wrong. And easily accessible information, especially in cases where they don't necessarily know what they need to be searching for, Oftentimes with these niche distros, both in community discourse and community documentation, they're fairly lacking. So things like forums, wikis, chat rooms, so on and so forth. As an example, here is a distro called, why did that open? Called Neptune OS. Not picking on this in particular, at the time it just happened to be number 99 on DistroWatch. Most of you have probably never heard of this distro and have no idea what it's all about and what it's actually shipping. So this is a distro based on Debian Stable shipping KDE Plasma. This right here is the extent of their written documentation. Basically just how to upgrade and one other little thing about modifying the look and feel. And they do have some videos, with the newest video being six years old, so maybe not super relevant to what is going on today. Now, with the information of what it is using, you as someone who has a good understanding of Linux, at least like a baseline understanding, you know what Debian is, you know what KDE is. Even if the distro has basically no resources, if you know what that distro is shipping, you can go directly to the source. If you want to know something about Debian, you can go to the Debian resources. If you want to know something about KDE, you can go to the KDE resources. And for pretty much every problem you have, you are going to find an answer pretty quickly. Maybe there'll be something weird with like a weird extension they ship that you've got to find out like what extension it is. But if you know what the extension is, then you can go to the extension source and once again, find the information you need. But say you're not like that. Say you're someone who is new to Linux, your friend recommended, hey, try out random niche distro. You try it out, and there's something you're not really sure about it. You want to change the accent color of your windows. You want to install a new application. But at this point, you don't realize there is a difference between desktop environments. You just know, this is what I have on my system. So you go to a search engine and search, Neptune. 
how to change window accent color, and you find absolutely nothing of value. Now, what if instead this user was put on something like Kubuntu or Fedora KDE, both of which are still KDE environments? In this case, the new user might still have no idea they are making use of KDE, but if they search Kubuntu, how to change accent color, Kubuntu, how to install a package, Fedora KDE, the exact same things, these are much bigger communities and even though the question might be really weirdly formed and doesn't really make any sense from someone who is a experienced Linux user, you are still much more likely to get an answer that resolves your question. And if you're really not sure about stuff and you manage to make your way to the forum of these projects, even if you ask a really basic question, you're likely going to get an answer from someone who even if they say, this is really basic, here is the documentation, read the documentation, you're still going to get something. Now again, this is not specific to this Neptune OS thing. Here is another one called Gecko Linux. This is a modified version of OpenSUSE. If you hand someone Gecko Linux installed on their system and they try to find out anything about this system, they are going to struggle really, really hard unless they actually know what makes up this system, what it's based on, what software it ships, it's going to make their life a lot harder than it needs to be than just giving them something a little bit more mainstream. Again, this Gecko Linux thing might be a great distro for someone who understands Linux and understands what they're getting into. It might be really well configured out of the box and offers a really great starting point. But if you don't know what makes up this system, it is going to give you a giant handicap when trying to find out anything about what's going on. For someone who is completely uninformed about Linux, in this case, it makes a lot more sense to just give them OpenSUSE itself. And it's not just a matter of finding existing resources, it's a matter of making your own. Eventually, with a little bit of digging, you're going to come across general support forums like Linux for Noobs and other places like that. This is a great place, and a lot of the time, you are going to get some pretty good answers here. But if you suggest a really niche distro, it is only going to make things harder for people on that forum. If it's something like Fedora, they probably have a good understanding of how Fedora works. If it's something like Manjaro, if it's something like Arch or Gentoo, or basically all of the mainstream distros that people know about and people use, you can get some pretty good answers. But if it's something like Gecko Linux or Neptune OS or any of these countless other distros that might be cool, but not many people use them, you ask the question and then the people there have to be like, okay, well, what even is this distro? Okay, I have to like go find this thing and then, okay, so it's actually running Debian, but maybe it's not running a modern version of Debian. Oh, it's not on Plasma 6 yet. Oh, it's on Plasma 5. So my answer has to be a Plasma 5 answer. Oh, the problem they have is actually with a widget. What's the widget? Oh, it's... Okay, so it's this widget right here. As you can see, it adds a lot more work. And because of that, a lot less people are going to be willing to answer your question. So what sort of distro should you be suggesting then? Well, the answer is pretty obvious. It's the distros all of us know about. This is not going to be an exhaustive list. I know there are going to be some other things. Don't at me. Actually, do. Leave me comments down below telling me what distro should be in the list. Things like the Ubuntu flavors. So, Kubuntu, Zubuntu, Ubuntu Cinnamon, things like this. Fedora and its spins. So, Fedora KDE, things like that. Linux Mint, Zorin, OpenSUSE, PopOS, even distros like Manjaro. Now, I don't think most new users should be on an Arch-based distro, but that's a whole separate thing. If you explain to them what an Arch-based distro is and they understand what it is, but Manjaro seems like a better fit for them, I think that's fine. Also, Manjaro is kind of like a fake Arch-based distro where they don't have the same update cycle as Arch, so sometimes you will see issues with AUR packages. Also, I do have some issues with Fedora with how much they focus on doing the new thing very, very early, and also the separation of proprietary software out into a separate repo can be confusing for someone who is new. But the difference is even though these distros do have some weird things about them, they are very popular distros, and these topics have been widely discussed. So if you do have an issue with getting proprietary software, you can easily find out about RPM Fusion. 
if you have a problem with the AUR package, you can very easily find out about this problem and find out that, hey, maybe I shouldn't use the AUR if I'm on Manjaro, or if I am using it, I should be very careful with it. And if you do run across something that is weird about the distro that maybe you can't find out something about it straight away, you can post in a forum, and because these distros are popular, you will very quickly get an answer about it. For the new users out there, recommend something that is popular, that has a lot of documentation, that has a lot of discussion. It is going to make their experience much, much smoother. Now, if you are an experienced user, go and use what you want. If you want to use something that has one user, be my guest. You can work it out for yourself then. I forgot to record the outro, so um, here we go. If you like the video, go like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, sleep, verify, linked in the description down below. That is going to be it for me, and I don't know what to say.